this time to introduce live and direct from planet Earth, Victoria in particular. He doesn't know that I know this, but a chess champion of some renown at age 12 represented Canada at the International Chess uh, Tournament. Um, and he's here to give us a manifesto on art as mathematics or mathematics as art or mathematics and art together. Evan. <laughs> Can everybody hear me without the mic? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody can hear me? Yeah. Side of the mic, you know. <laughs> all right. So imagine a list of the greatest artists of all time. Who's on that list? I've got Van Gogh, Monet, maybe Shakespeare's on the list. But I'd be surprised if any mathematicians are. So in this presentation, I'd like to persuade you that, in fact, mathematics is just as artistic as any other discipline. Okay, so when deciding whether or not math is an art, there are two, you need to first define art. So I think there are two approaches to defining art. The first one is a broad approach. So you can say something like, art is everything, or art is what I say is art. But that wouldn't make for much of a presentation. So I've decided to opt for a conservative definition of art, a conservative. Uh, so to do this, I opened up Webster's Dictionary and found the three most clear and objective definitions of art. These are human creativity, any specific skill or its application, and a making of things that have form or beauty. Okay, so why is math form human creativity? First, the main goal of a mathematician is to create something new, some sort of innovation. In many cases, something that nobody else has ever even thought of before. Another reason that math is creative is that uh, math is purely theoretical. Mathematicians don't, don't worry about how things actually are, they just study the mathematical plane. Okay, so why is math a skill? The most important reason why math is a skill is that it's really, really hard. Uh, <laughs> it takes a long time to learn math, it's challenging. Yeah, it's, it's a skill. Okay, so what is mathematical beauty? Uh, mathematics, rightly viewed, possesses not only truth, but supreme beauty. A beauty cold and austere like that of sculpture, without appeal to any part of our weaker nature. Without the gorgeous trappings of painting or music, it is sublimely pure and capable of a stirring perfection such as only the greatest art can show. The true spirit of delight, the exaltation, the sense of being more than man, which is the touchstone of the highest excellence, is to be found in mathematics as surely as poetry. That's Bertrand Russell, uh, a philosopher and mathematician on mathematical beauty. So, if you don't understand what mathematical beauty is, um, it's tough because nobody can really tell you. It's just something you have to know, something you have to appreciate. It's sort of like asking, why is Beethoven's Ninth Symphony beautiful? To highlight that last point, didn't come out very well, uh, that's Jackson Pollock's number five. I don't think it's a very nice painting at all myself. <laughs> but it's the most expensive painting of all time, $150 million. Here is Starry Starry Night by Vincent Van Gogh. And this is one of my favorite paintings myself. I really like it. But I still couldn't explain to somebody else why I like it, why I think it's beautiful. Now, this is Euler's identity. <laughs> the physicist Richard Feynman describes, described Euler's identity as the single most remarkable formula in mathematics. And this is because of the simplicity and how it brings together all sorts of different ideas in mathematics. OK. so. There are three main ways you can see beauty in mathematics. The first is you can see beauty in the final answer. That is, you trudge the difficult problem and uh, slave your way through until you get the answer, and then you get that sense of accomplishment and completion. The second way is you see the beauty in the actual process of solving it. You enjoy the experience. And thirdly, you can see beauty in the formula or problem as a whole. Like That would be the way that most mathematicians see mathematical beauty, like uh, Euler's identity. You see the whole thing. You see it as a whole. Um, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, a psychologist, discovered a psychological state called flow. This is a creative moment when a per person is completely involved in an activity for its own sake. Their entire working memory, all that they're thinking about is on that one subject. They, they enjoy that subject for its intrinsic value. They might be doing it for some other reason, but at that moment they're only thinking about that one thing. Um, 
he found that people in all sorts of different disciplines experience this psychological state. Uh, he also found that it is the, one of the happiest moments of anybody's life, is while they're completely concentrated on one thing. Uh, the, some of the disciplines that he found were uh, painters, sculptors, composers, musicians, athletes, stockbrokers, chess players, Buddhist monks, and mathematicians. Okay, so the mathematicians care about mathematical beauty. It doesn't even matter now. Uh, Terence Tao, who many consider to be the world's best pure mathematician, he evaluates his students' dissertations based on three criteria. The first one, originality. That's the creative aspect of mathematics. The second one is accuracy. You need to get the right answer. And uh, the third one is beauty. Uh, G. H. Hardy, he wrote an essay called A Mathematician's Apology, where he defends a pure mathematician. He defends his, his life and what he, uh, what he accomplished. He said even though he had no intention of creating something useful, he thought that mathematics is important just for the purpose of mathematics itself. Uh, Bertrand Russell, who had the quote earlier, claimed that the desire to learn more mathematics, mathematical beauty, kept him from killing himself while he was a teenager. Uh, okay, so what can we do about it? First, schools should begin teaching mathematics for both its artistic and practical value. And secondly, people need to make a conscious effort to think of and present math as something artistic. Okay, so I don't know what the most popular subject is in school. Maybe it's PE, maybe it's English, I'm not sure. Uh, but math certainly isn't the most popular subject in school. Um, now, I'm sure there's a lot of different reasons why this is, but one reason may be that uh, math is never taught in art classes and appreciation of mathematics isn't taught in math classes. Another possibility is there's a, a psychologists have created a new, uh, created a, discovered a new psychological disorder called mathematics disorder, which is um, an inability to do mathematics that interferes with a daily living and your success. <laughs> okay, uh, changing public opinion. First, the most important way to change public opinion is for mathematicians and math instructors to both see and present themselves as artists as well as scientists. I've never had a math instructor talk about the intrinsic value of mathematics. The closest I've ever had is, some instru is an instructor saying how fun a particular problem is or how fun a certain area of mathematics is, but never any, never any artistic claims. And secondly, non-mathematicians need to make a conscious effort to associate math with art and to express this to others. So when you think of art, Try to think of math. And when you think of math, try and think of art. Okay, so there are two main goals in this presentation. The first one I explicitly stated at the start, that is that I wanted to persuade you that math is artistic, and I wanted to get rid of any sort of stigmas that might be associated with mathematics. And secondly, uh, a more underlying principle in the presentation is that something can be both practically useful and entertaining. You can make money doing something, you can help society, you can help other people, and you can be enjoying what you're all right, that's my presentation. Thanks. Thank you very much. Does anybody have a quick question? Okay, we're going to move on so we can keep on uh, schedule here. Thank you very much for that. Um, I just have to look at my program so I know where I'm going. Experience Vancouver is uh, right next door, and Women Exposed, Panel B, 